Chelsea, Massachusetts is in Eastern Massachusetts. For over 400 years, Chelsea has been a gateway community to Boston. The three words that describe Chelsea are strong, united, and resilient. We talk about that a lot because Chelsea is a poor community, it's a low-income community, it is an immigrant community. I grew up in Chelsea, um, I went to school in Chelsea, and I think I've experienced a bevy of the disadvantages that our residents have experienced here. But we have a great team here in Chelsea that's dedicated to improve the conditions, really help the community and understand what those difficulties are. I think that Chelsea is a really tight-knit community. I think for a small, dense city, we have had many triumphs over the last couple of decades. Chelsea has had had three main fires. In 1973, a fourth of our city was essentially wiped away. It was a very dark time, but it gave an opportunity for Chelsea and its people to rethink what the city should be. What's amazing about Chelsea is that after every crisis, every catastrophe, a new Chelsea is born, a new Chelsea arises. In 2024, Chelsea launched our first comprehensive master plan, Chelsea Palante, Chelsea Onward. In many of our cultures, Palante is a word that implies movement. We have very old infrastructure in the city, um, but we've been very proactive in trying to um, replace it. Um, a lot of our water mains um, have been replaced over the course of the last few decades. The issue that we're combating now is replacing the actual water services that supply this water to the buildings and to our residents. We have a split ownership where the public side from the curb stop to the water main is owned by the city, whereas from the curb stop to the building is owned by the residents. So really trying to bridge that gap between um, the city and our residents to ensure that those entire services can be uh, replaced with safer materials to ensure that drinking water is um, healthy for them. We have been working on sewer separation for about 15 years. It, it is a lot of work to dig up the street, put in a new sewer, reconnect all the houses, all the catch basins to the correct pipes, and then make sure everything is still flowing downstream correctly until we can separate all parts of the city. Right now, we are in the middle of our biggest effort to date. It's a $14 million project in just about a quarter mile stretch of our downtown commercial district, where we're doing actually a pretty cool project, the current combined sewer line is this giant 72 inch brick sewer and it's in remarkably good condition. So what we're doing is preserving that as the new stormwater conduit and we're putting in new sewers parallel to it and these will conduct sewage directly to the MWRA treatment plant while allowing storm water and only storm water to flow safely down into the Chelsea River. The city of Chelsea has over 70% combined sewer mains. Uh, Stormwater tree pits help mitigate the, the stormwater runoff and help avoid and alleviate the overflow potential in a lot of these combined sewer systems. So our stormwater tree pits collect surface runoff after storms, rainstorms tend to come through the area. Our goal is to support infiltration and evaporation by planting trees in existing tree pits instead of having the runoff go straight into our sewer systems. The Island and River Storm Surge Barrier is a project that's been under development between the cities of Chelsea and Everett for over 10 years now, and it addresses a really critical flood risk that our two communities share. All of that area, which is 500 acres, is now at extremely high risk for both tidal and coastal storm surge flooding. There are three main parts of the storm surge barrier. One is something called a storm surge control facility, which is essentially a set of tide gates that stops water from flowing back up that culvert. One is the linear barrier, which is stopping water from coming up over land. And then the third part is habitat restoration and public access. The big reason this is so critical is because that area contains a lot of life critical industry, not just for Chelsea and Everett, but for the entire greater Boston area. And the flood barrier is our plan for how we're going to protect that area, how we're going to prevent the catastrophic flooding because we don't know when a severe coastal storm is going to hit. We've been identifying areas where there are elevated temperatures due to the urban heat island effect. And what we've been trying to do is combat those heightened temperatures with cooling features. In one block in Chelsea, we painted the roadway from asphalt black into a lighter color that could reflect heat. We painted roofs white 
to, again, reduce heat that is felt on the street. We planted a large amount of trees and we worked with those neighbors to ensure that those trees would live. We've been focusing a lot on how can our parks help residents stay cool during heat waves, especially as the summers get hotter and hotter. So for years now, Chelsea has prioritized putting splash pads in all of our parks. All but one has splash pads and they all have some kind of shade shelter or canopy feature. At bus stops, those cooling features can include anything from misting stations, providing water to residents as they wait at the bus stop, as well as water fountains and solar fans as well. The Chelsea Microgrid Project is a pretty novel project for the city of Chelsea and for municipalities in general. Microgrids are basically power generation and then storage capacity, typically on one site. Um, but for the city of Chelsea, the microgrid project actually is comprised right now uh, as phase one. Um, and it's two external batteries at the police station and the city hall. And then there are solar panels at the DBW yard. So effectively together, those represent a microgrid system that is not housed on just one site, um, but it, it's, it's more disparate across the city. Um, but it's still creating resilience benefits for the city. So having those backup batteries eventually be implemented at the city hall and the police station, for example, would allow for, in the case of a natural hazard, knocking out the power grid, allow for backup generation on site at those two locations. Chelsea Electricity Choice is a municipal electrical aggregation plan. What that means is that the city is coming together to purchase electricity for all of our residents and allow individual households and residents to choose their supplier of electricity. So a wind farm off the, the coast here in Massachusetts or solar arrays in Maine or New Hampshire, there's a lot of options. The future of Chelsea is green. I can already see the difference when I'm driving down the street, that it feels more like a neighborhood. The future of Chelsea, in my mind, we continue to be a gateway for people to come to America or to come to the Boston area and find good paying jobs, uh, to find affordable housing, to enjoy open space and parks and playgrounds and our waterfront with their friends and family. The Chelsea of the future is a Chelsea that continues to provide for its residents, continues to be a place that is welcoming, that uh, is, is engaging, that is activist, that is emotional and is thriving. We are not trying to be our wealthy neighbor. We are not trying to be a city that is, is gentrifying and welcoming development at a, at a high rate. We are trying to be a city that, that is, is healthy, is sustainable, and supports all of our residents.